Hey everybody, it's Yo Taylor back here at the Style Table. I am here on My Style Mondays. You know, we're here every Monday at 7 p.m. And today I'm here with my great friend, Fran Brown. She is the CEO of the Shepherd Tree Etiquette and Social Protocol School. And she specializes in young people and in, in children and young people, young adults. And she teaches them all about how to show up correctly. Fran, welcome to the show. Why, thank you very much. It is so awesome to be here again. So last time you were doing a non, you had a nonprofit that you help kids basically do, it, it's definitely a layup to what your, what your company is, what your business is. Uh, so, which is so spectacular and everything that you do for young people and kids are amazing. So now we're going to talk about the business end. Yes. And so what we want to know, because we want to, we always want to hear the backstory. So we want to hear how you got started, what motivated you and, um, everything else. And just any, any, anything we want to hear. Yes. <laughs> yes. You put me on a great day um, because I have been a so social media discussion information today. So this just tags on to um, what I'm doing and what I'm passionate about. So, you know, I'm a young girl, grew up in Alabama, lived in the city, and I had a great aunt. She was the epitome of grace and etiquette and style and fashion. And I'm just this little girl just, you know, needed to be fed with information and all of this stuff. Now, at the time, I certainly did not appreciate all the things she taught me. But what happened was all that she taught me was packed inside so that when the, the career that I chose it just exploded. It just aligned. Um, it, everything I do with, with my career has a lot to do with the public. And because I was a child and that great aunt taught me and she fed me all these wonderful gifts um, that helps me to be successful, I then take that on and want to give back to children. And at a time, especially with COVID, but even before COVID, at a time where you kind of see things degrading um, in, in our youth, I just want to pour back into them because I take pride in my community. Um, I, I think my community also would like to keep that pride within itself. And in order for that to keep going, we need to give back to the youth so that we can keep this and enjoy this and, and just reap the benefits of it. But we cannot continue this unless we give back to the youth and feed them as well. So with that, all of that just kind of, you know, evolved into something that I am truly passionate about. So therefore, the shepherd tree came from all of that Um giving back with, with what my great aunt gave me with etiquette and um, work ethic and just showing up with style, grace, excellence. And it, it, it feels good. It just feels good. So everything that I was fed with, I'm giving back. And it's interesting how you said, how you say, you know, as a kid, you were like, oh, you know, Mm -hmm. You know, and but even though our kids are like, oh, gosh, really, mm -hmm. mom, dad, but they're actually listening and they're retaining that information, even though we're feeding it and we're feeling like, oh, gosh, I just don't want to hear it. I just don't want to hear their negative energy about it. But they're mm -hmm. really absorbing it and it mm -hmm. translates, um, even though sometimes when they're home with us and they're, you're just like telling them a hundred times or whatever. Well, I mean, not in my house. I, I can give mm -hmm. them a look. I didn't have to tell a hundred times, but you know, you can see what you're feeding your children. Mm -hmm. Now it translates in real life. I remember my son was going to visit his dad in Tampa and I remember he came back off the flight and these two ladies came up to me and said, 
oh my God, is that your son? He's such a gentleman. He helped me with my luggage. He jumped up and helped me. And how old is he? And um, I was like, who are you? I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> so that's when you really <laughs> know mm -hmm. that they are listening and they are, you know, receiving what we're teaching them. So. And it and it goes to show, because I, I have these wonderful conversations with my dear friends and neighbors, the work in progress starts at home. It's work. It's a sacrifice. We feel like we're beating our heads up against the wall. But all the kids have is what we give them when we're at home. And hopefully that is insurmountable. It adds up to way more than what social media is doing to the kids. Um, and once they can hold on to that, that becomes their core. That's what they have to survive with. So they show all of that work outside of the home. We may not get it, but then like you said, once we hear other people talk about it, it's like, oh, thank you. <laughs> it was worth <laughs> it, my goodness, to somebody. But you know, I just I just feel like we cannot give up on our youth. I, I was on social media today. Um, and, and of course I get pushed back. I'm supposed to get pushed back because I need to navigate if I'm doing things correctly, uh, if I'm going in the right direction. So I welcome it all, but we cannot give up on them. I cannot get on social media and yap, yap, yap all day long without actually putting work behind it. So I don't mind speaking to the kids. I don't mind speaking to kids that, that I don't know, young adults, you know, it, under a safety zone. I don't mind telling them in a, in a loving way, we can do something differently. You know, just they're listening. They will, they will take on um, those positive things that are, that are given to them from their community, but we actually have to do the work. We actually have to, to give the action towards that in order for that to work, or we have really no right to say anything. They really follow what we do. I mean, it really is amazing how much they, like I said, they pay attention. Um, I totally agree with you, but they are watching us. They really watch what we do and they emulate it um, and our habits, the things that we do as far as how we, take care of ourselves, our, our hygiene. They watch everything. They watch how we, I mean, my son is like so in the health and fitness, way more so than I am, but he watched me, uh, how I cooked, how I took care of my health, how I exercise. So they're watching everything that we do. And as an adult, it's amazing to see him carrying on and taking it even further. So his right. kids will get what we fed them. You're so right. You are so right. And I think, you know, a little bit of the criticism sometimes is it's it's just their little job. It's just a little McDonald's. They don't care about that. It's just a little, yeah, yeah, but they have to start somewhere. And then you want all of the positive things to grow. I don't, I, don't want, I don't want the kids to start in a negative. You actually have to put into practice those good habits. No one is expecting them to be perfect, right? but we have to continue to teach them and lead them into a direction where they are growing a positive space for themselves and that they're actually growing for their future every day. I, I was saying today, their lives, they cannot believe that their lives are just a 24-hour cycle. It's not. You, you, you actually are working towards a future. And it, I think a part of that is lost. Yeah. I, I think a lot of that is lost. They are doing everything for not all kids, but the, the whole thing kicks and giggles for the now. Yeah. But you where's your growth? Where is the growth in that? Because you're going to be 20, 25, 30, 37, 40. And if you have not grown or had anywhere to start to grow, you're just in a vicious cycle. Right. And I don't, I don't like seeing that at all. I don't like seeing that. And it starts with the little stuff, how we dress, how we step outside from yeah. our home. 
Right. And also how it's much bigger than just one person. We are actually representing our families. We are representing what is being poured into us in the home. Mm -hmm. So I, it's dress, style, showing up on time, work ethic, um, how we represent ourselves at a restaurant, at the bank, at little stuff. But it all adds up to bigger stuff. And it, 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 then it's ingrained in you as a part of you. And that what you practice and make perfect is who you are. And that can go negatively, too. Right. You, yeah. You can grow that negative self-image. And, and we get tired of seeing that. I believe in the kids a lot more than that. I don't I don't want to give up. And just believe, oh, nothing's going to happen. It's getting all bad and it's just negative. No, no. I want them to know that they can strive for their excellence. And I did say their excellence, not comparing them to anybody else, but the excellence that's within themselves. Right. Yeah. This is such good stuff, man. <laughs> this is such good stuff. Now that I'm I'm a yo ma, <laughs> a yo ma. It's uh, it's you know I see my bonus daughter and son how they are really raising their kids, and it's amazing to see and all the good stuff that they're pouring into them. It make it does make a difference. Um, it. You know, when you're, especially if you're a single person, if you're a single mom or a single dad and you're out there and you're just out there trying to make sure that you keep the lights on and you make the mortgage payment and mm -hmm. they're in the best school you could get them in and you're trying your best, you know, sometimes you do, you're just like, oh God, you know, mm -hmm. um, I'm not ready for the, I, I don't even feel like this argument. I don't feel like this um situation. I don't want to be the heavy. I've been gone all day. I don't want to be the heavy going, you didn't do this, or this is what you should be doing where you feel like you're being negative, but really they need it. They need it. And I don't think, you know, we know more now and I mean, you take Instagram and any of those platforms there's so many um, doctors and specialists and, and psychologists that have all this great information that we didn't have several years back. Yeah. And, a, and a lot of times you don't have to just all the time be weighted down with the negative and what you did not do. It's congratulating you and lifting up the, the great things that they've done. And that in itself is teaching them as well. It's giving them positive reinforcement. And I, I, I don't think we, um, we didn't do that before. That positive reinforcement is truly, really big. It's and so, really big. so tell me this, like as a parent too, I would imagine just give me your opinion on this, that you should also, you know, give yourself a break and congratulate yourself on everything that you're doing to take care of the family. So you know, just know that you deserve some praise too, some positive reinforcement mm -hmm. as well. And you know, you can't, you won't necessarily get it from the kids, especially when they're like, like <laughs> age, age between twelve and like fourteen or fifteen, when their brain is sucked out by aliens and mm -hmm. <laughs> and they come back to you. So, but you should, you know, give yourself. You know, yeah, I'm out here. I'm out here doing it. I'm doing the best I can for my child. To I my totally child. agree. And 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 surrounding yourself with people that can cheer you on and you also can cheer them on. Feeding yeah. one another. Man, it's it, you can't do this stuff alone. Community. You cannot do this stuff alone. So when you surround yourself with with those positive moms, whether they're single or married or whatever the situation, you need that to kind yeah. of pull you along. Cause sometimes we're just all dragging. We're just, <laughs> we yeah. are, and we make mistakes. We do. I am the first one to admit mistakes are being made. They will be on somebody's chair, but for the, <laughs> for the <laughs> most part, <laughs> for the most part, just really getting out there and reinforcing those good habits because, I mean, 
we see this no matter what side of the fence you are on, either politically or religiously or whatever, if we don't have etiquette, the foundation of, of living amongst each other, I mean, there are days where you just kind of have to shrug off a couple of things here and there. But what if we all just lived in our emotion, stepped outside and just did whatever, just based on our emotion and how I feel about you for any given reason? It, a mess, a complete mess. Yeah. There has to be decorum. There has to be decorum to have some sort of peace to live amongst people, the public. And if we don't have that, we've lost. We've right. Lost. So we can all sit back and have a cigar and just call it a day. We're done. It's the backbone of a civil society. It is. It is. And I think, you know, you don't want to feel like we're losing that. We have to have a structured decorum, baseline decorum to get through this. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, everything you're saying is so good. And when we talk about, um, I know you and I have discussed young people and how they show up for jobs. I know so many times, um, you know, sometimes I would walk through, if you walk through a mall or something and you see a young person, I've seen a few looking for jobs, you know, and they're just not ready. They're just, they're just not, they're just kind of, Hey, you know, you're hiring, <laughs> you know, they're not yeah. presenting themselves in a way. And I know young people like to wear their hair in all different colors. And, you know, I'm good. I'm really down for that. That That's your self-expression. However, you know, you might want to invest, just get the clip-ins, <laughs> dye the clip-ins any different color. So then when you're ready to go get jobs and you're ready to present yourself mm -hmm. or, um, you know, college, um, college interviews, all those things, those video interviews you have to do now for some schools. You know, it's nice to just pop that out. <laughs> and then when you're out with your friends, pop it back in and keep it moving. You know, right. we all, I had, I remember dyeing my hair blue and when I was in high school and my mother was on the other end of our dial up phone going, yeah, that's great. When I get home, that better be out. Okay. <laughs> And um, I had Prell shampoo. That <laughs> Prell, listen, it's a wonder. I, have, I, I that Prell is could clean, could strip the paint off a car. Yes. That yes. that shampoo that was out of my hair before she got home, and she got home at five thirty-five. <laughs> Blue, yo, really? Oh, my God! Well, it was full spirit, you know, and everybody else was doing it. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh. Yeah. Oh my gosh. Yes. Um, you know, one thing that um, we've lost is knowing that body language, uh, the whole package is being observed when we look for jobs. Now you have those entry jobs, maybe not as much, but you're, you're not, no one is trying to stay at an entry job. I would hope, I hope that people are stretching and reaching and building for where they want to be um, and your body language right. and, 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 and just the, your clothes, like you said, your clothes and how you present your best self. Someone was saying um, on one of my posts, yeah, the, the kids are just showing up thinking I'm here. So pay me. Right. It, and that's not it. <laughs> you, it you, work that way. That's exactly. Mm. You're, you actually have to do something and you're actually learning within that entry level job. So a part of that is, 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 is my business as well. Your image um, and how you present yourself, mm -hmm. um, you know, holding your shoulders back. How do you sit? And these are just, People think, oh, that's nothing. Yeah, something. It actually is something. And it is a part of the whole package of a person. And they, the higher the pay, the more the scrutiny. The more, the, it's, that's just what it is. It's always been that way. It's yeah, always. 
And, and there's a high percentage of people who, if they see you presented in a way that's like professional and you're sitting upright and they look at you saying, okay, this person is competent. There's a direct link to that. I mean, there's data all on that. And so the sooner you feed your kids and the sooner we feed our kids that information, they're ready. Um, they're ready to go. I was, and I, as far as slouching and everything, my mother used to always say, stop slouching, stop slouching. But I did because I was so tall. Mm. I was taller than all the other kids. And I just wanted to be like the other kids mm -hmm. and not Jurassic Park, the Jurassic Park friend. Um, so I get it. And those are habits that you have to break. But, you know, I didn't have the shepherd tree <laughs> and mm -hmm. it, it wasn't accessible to me. My parents couldn't afford something like that uh, at that time. And there wasn't a whole lot of access to, to information like we have now with social media and uh, classes being taught in different ways. So, you know, it's a blessing to have that, but it's still needed. It's 2023. We still need this. And it's probably in the worst way right now. Exactly. Prime example um, with the airlines. I mean, we're hearing news left and right. I don't know. Something has truly unraveled <laughs> with, with, with airline travel. And 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 part of uh, the service that I provide under the Shepherd Tree is airplane etiquette. You you would never think why would we need that? Well, there have been through COVID a few years where people did not travel and those who would have traveled or would have been introduced to travel have now missed out on a few years. And so now we have all this unfiltered social media information and bad behavior. Mm -hmm. Some of those people do not know how to act. They do not know how to properly um, act <laughs> with travel. And it, this is not a judgment to people that things have happened, but it's needed. Like you said, it's needed. Right. We, we cannot, we definitely cannot be on an airplane 30,000 feet uh, trying to, you know, having this huge di disturbance. It, it doesn't even sound right, but it's happening. It's happening. Right. And, and young people are watching this behavior. They're watching this behavior. They're watching. And if it's their parents, you know, how are they going to behave? Mm -hmm. And and if it's that off chance where their parents are behaving badly on the plane, mm -hmm. then and the parents aren't really at that time. It's not all the time they get arrested or it makes the news. Then the child feels like, well, you know. I can behave this way here because there's going to be no consequences for it, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and, and to even um, add on to that, when you think about it and you say, you know, customer service shouldn't be a big deal or whatever for the, for those who may push back on this, the where you don't want customer service to lack, is when you have paid hundreds or thousands amount for your or an airline ticket mm -hmm. and you get bad customer service at an airline, then customer service matters to you. Right. Okay. So and though some of those kids are young too. So now you really want to think about whether or not you want to expose those young adults and those kids, you need to expose them to good practices with etiquette. You want good customer service at the airline. And, and social media has shown you why you want that type of service. Right. You know, it's, it's already stressful enough flying. You do not want that added headache or pressure to deal with that. And it's happening. Yeah, it is. And I remember years ago when I, when I was flying and sometimes you would see um, children <laughs> it would always be amazing to me. It would be, be like a three-year-old totally controlling the whole family in the, in the row. And the parents don't know how to 
uh, deal with the child, mm -hmm. you know, and then that could, if the child is doing things um, that is also that behavior affects other people mm -hmm. in a tight space on the plane. And then you're, you know, you're disrupting everything mm -hmm. because you can't control your child. Mm -hmm. You know, um, those things matter. And so having plain etiquette and having um, a system where you can help parents who don't know how to manage your kids in tight spaces, mm -hmm. you know, I would argue that the child, especially a toddler, was just an egg a few years ago and you're in your 30s. I think you got this, but OK, mm -hmm. <laughs> you mm -hmm. obviously people don't. And that's why they need um, themselves. Like, do you see yourself offering training and assistance to parents yes. as well as the, the kids to help them have like, you know, just a, a course maybe to how to, to deal with situations like that. Yes, most definitely. And, and I, I, I've given out um, some um, advice uh, to a lot of parents that, that are traveling with young, young kids and, and older kids. Um, the trick about traveling with young kids is to make sure that they can get their hands on tactile, tactile items. Um, something that you wouldn't think about, uh, I was on a flight and usually the airlines put a lot of the young kids towards the back of the plane. Or maybe it's closer to the bathrooms or to kind of keep the noise level down. And uh, uh, y'all want to correct you on something. We don't want to say control the kids. We don't okay. want to you don't, don't say control. <laughs> okay. All right. But, but management. I received that. I received that. <laughs> 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 manage that stress. Manage. Um, Something yeah. as simple because a lot, a lot of kids get on the plane. They want to. They touch everything. They touch the call bells. The call bells are ringing pretty loud. Um, it, it it goes throughout the airplane, and you may have an airplane uh, flight of four hours. You don't. You really don't want to listen to that four hours. Bring a roll of tape. Simple as that. Bring a roll of 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 just cheap brown tape, and let the child stick the tape on the back of the seats, let them tear it. They have to have keep movement. So you, you have to have tape, you, know, you can bring crayon, paper, lots of paper, it doesn't matter, let them tear the paper. Um, I've told people bring a, a little blanket. And a trash bag with the tape and that paper that they're tearing. <laughs> <laughs> and lay, lay a, a blanket right in front of your feet um, if you're, especially if you're sitting on a window seat, um, have them sit on the blanket and they have all their little toys. Don't bring your expensive toys, but right. just broken crayon and everything. Just keep those hands moving. They will get bored. And when they are bored, a lot of times they are noisy. That's what babies do. You cannot stop. That is natural for them. But you got to keep keep some tape. Let them have their own. When you, you have their little suitcase rolling or backpack, keep all of their stuff in there. Make sure you have the over-the-ear headphones. Yes. A lot of people do not understand that when you have those iPads or iPhones or whatever, it's loud. You may you may have the volume down low, but if you don't have headphones, the people five, 10 rows ahead of you, they can hear that sound. Yeah. It's, it's just the way that it works on an airplane. And I know people don't mean to do it, but you have to keep a pair of the over-the-ear headphones for your younger children. Yeah. And, and those are so cheap. You can get those anywhere. You can get them in the airport in, in case you've yeah. forgotten yours. And it will also give you peace so you can watch your movie, yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. fight movie and relax. Um, I, you know, back in the day, I didn't have all that. So but I, you know, I remember the portable D, uh, DVD player. Oh, yeah. Oh my gosh, that was life changing. I put that headset on, and it was yes, great. Indeed, yes, indeed. And and on the airplane, it is not the best time to dole out 
lessons to little kids, you can forget all of that. Bring the lollipops. You mm -hmm. want to kind of make them happy so that the stress level is down in that type space. Yeah. Your little the the little life lessons that they need do not tr you, trouble yourselves with trying to reinforce so much of that. Then right. um, you want to keep those toddlers happy and calm, and you know, especially when um, the, when we when the plane comes down and the pressure to their ears, they need to suck on a lollipop or drink from their bottle to help with their ears. There are a lot of little things, and 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 you know, especially new mom, you don't know this stuff, right? And it's again, air travel is, as it shouldn't be stressful. It is stressful. You don't want any added stress. So right. I definitely have tips and trip uh, uh, tips for all of those types of situations. And it's so funny um, when you're at the boarding door and you see this mom comes in and it's freezing cold. These parents come in and the, everybody else has their coats and stuff on. And then there's the one child in a tutu in her ballet outfit, you know. <laughs> And this mother had it perfectly. She said, listen, we had to get out the door. She wanted to wear her ballet <laughs> outfit. You got to make her play, put her in the tutu and a parka and keep it going, you know, because yeah. you can't really debate with a toddler when you're trying to make a flight. <laughs> no, ma'am. Yeah. Well, you definitely cannot. And it doesn't matter. Everyone is trying to be happy and they are too. Let them wear that tutu. Does and not matter. Tell me this. I see parents with the kids have doing their homework. Um, I am always like amazed when I see a, a child reading and um, and also um, doing their homework. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. what's it? How do you I mean, is that should you dangle the carrot? We're going to go on our trip. But guess what? You have to do your homework. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> But a lot of times you see, you know, kind of the upper grades doing it. They they have stock into whatever they're doing. So, you know, you want to believe that at that point they're taking homework pretty serious. But yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Do that. I, 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 I definitely believe in that. But again, it, it should not be. Uh, such a heavy task for vacation. Vacation is just that. Relax, vacate. Um, but I, 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 I definitely believe that however your household runs and education runs and the kids want to get that stuff done and books, yes, indeed, bring those books. I love seeing that. I love seeing that. Now, if you do want to talk about um, etiquette on the plane and, and when it comes to children, and if you do want to you know, teach a little something here and there that's, you know, not heavily weighted down, something as simple as allowing your child, when we, when we bring those carts out, that should signal we're getting ready to give you something. So, you know, ask your child before we even come. What are you going to have to drink or what do you want? And allow them to ask the flight attendant, give eye contact. Let me hear that voice, you know, a thank you or please. Mm -hmm. Those are the, the little lessons that are not big. And I'm one of those flight attendants. I will get down to their level and I will ask for eye contact when they have those headphones on. I go, hey, I can't you and that, that signals to them yeah let them self-advocate that's a lesson in itself and I love seeing children do that and it's under your protection so most definitely relax yourself and and, and let that happen let the children speak up we want that you know, although if they're self-advocating for coca-cola and high caffeine drinks <laughs> You might have to intercede. <laughs> I bet. You know what I do for that? Once the once that child orders that drink, I look at the parent and I go, is that okay? You know, some of the parents are a little shocked. I was like, is that okay? They go, yes. And sometimes the kids will shock the parents. The parents will say, well, they want a Coke. And so what I do is I get on my knees and I say, what would you like to drink? They'll say, I want water. Yeah. I'm laughing. You're like, 
they don't want to go. They want water. Right. And the whole plane wants them to have water. <laughs> really do. <laughs> Oh my God, this has been so great, you guys. If your parents and grandparents, you know, as grandparents, some of us, you know, we, we're the go along on vacation. So we're sitting on the plane with the kids too. So this has been great. If you guys, it's a, this is also a great gift too, um, as grandparents, you know, to give to your grandchildren, um, to have a, uh, take an etiquette course. And mm -hmm. um, in protocol course, so they know what to do, and it gives them a leg up um, socially and uh, just for life in general. So, yeah, I, I think this is amazing. I think this is awesome, actually. Exactly. And and this is is this starts to allow them to build and practice and make perfect. No one is expecting once you come through that course, yes, they're, they're, they're done. They're not done. You have to reinforce that at home as well. But that gives them, like you said, a leg up so that it's already ingrained. By the time they're 15 or high school, that just comes natural. Right. And so the younger, the better, because they are already practicing those things to become habits. It's not, you know, it's something that at that point they don't have to do. They just do. You want to get to them to that point. That's just something I do. And then on, on that note, we thank Fran for being on the show with us again and sharing her knowledge and her tips. And she's after the show, she's. Um, in the comments, she's going to put all of her information, how you can contact her, how you can take the courses and all of her social media. She's going to put uh, all the ways that you can contact her. And you guys know where you can find me. I'm on um, Yo Taylor at the Style Table on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, on YouTube, where you can see Fran and many other fabulous women talk about their business and we talk about style and how it relates to what they're doing every Monday at 7 p.m. See you next time. Bye. Bye.